Mark Rogers, TV, the voice of college football with some quick uh, halftime analysis tonight, instant analysis of the first half between the Spartans and the Aggies. That would be Michigan State and Utah State in East Lansing. Michigan State has scored a late touchdown with Brian Lewerke going through the air uh, in a last minute drive of the second quarter to pull Sparty ahead 20 to 14, but it's been a rough half for Michigan State, as reflected by the score. Tracking college football through the night, we've got Syracuse taking on Western Michigan. We've got Duke and Army. We've got later Stanford and San Diego State after a big Thursday night uh, with uh, the marquee game. Northwestern holding off Purdue 31-27. Wake Forest going to Tulane and surviving in that one in overtime as well. And a huge night by Trayvon Williams of uh, Texas A&M with 240 yards rushing for the Aggies over Northwestern State 59-7 to in Jimbo Fisher's debut. Trayvon Williams, the second highest single-game rushing performance in Texas A&M history going way back to 1950. So I had a request from Clemson alum 98 to go with some quick analysis of halftime uh, here at the halftime with Michigan State and Utah State, and I aim to please. So I will uh, run down what I've got. I walked in the door with about 12 minutes left in the first quarter. I had the game on DVR and had to catch up with Utah State up at that point, seven to nothing. So what has happened to the Michigan State defense is uh, defensive coordinator Harlan Barnett uh, has left. Uh, Mike Tressel, who's been on Mark Antonio's staff since he took over the head job at Michigan State, uh, but now pressed into play calling on a defense, had to prepare his football team for a high tempo, fast paced game on defense. And what Michigan State did to prepare for this game was that they ran three different huddles by the scout team so that they could run the plays fast enough to keep Sparty um, prepared on defense. And they did not appear. Uh, to be ready despite all that prep time in the opening drive as Utah State marched it down the field to go up seven to nothing. And then Michigan State came back. They drove it down the field, but the first two Michigan State drives stalled. And this was a recurring theme of the first half as well. Utah State with their edge rushers beating Michigan State's tackles. Lewerke was sacked on third down Two consecutive series in field goal range. So Sparty did convert the field goals, but could not convert the touchdowns. And the second of the two drives, LJ Scott was stopped at the six inch line or Michigan State would have scored the touchdown to tie the game or take the lead at that point into seven. But Michigan State kicks two field goals. Great job by the Yankees defense with the pass rush completely overwhelming Michigan State's tackles and Michigan State lost some firepower along its offensive line, most notably its center, Jack Allen or Brian Allen. We get the Allens mixed up and we'll pass along a note here in just a second on Michigan State's uh, family um, contingency between the Bullas and the Allens. But Lewerke sacked twice on two consecutive drives, forced field goals. Uh, the Michigan State place kicker, Matt Coughlin, who hit on almost all of his field goals last year, I believe 14 for 17 was the number. Uh, his long last year was 46 yards. He kicked a 49 yarder uh, to start his season this year. So he already hits for a career long. And uh, Michigan State trailed 7-3. to three. They kicked the other field goal after getting sacked on another third down at 7-6. to six. Utah State comes back with another nice drive. Quarterback Jordan Love was very impressive. Missed a few throws downfield, but hit all the throws underneath that you would expect him to hit. And uh, Jordan Love has been extremely impressive for Utah State. At one point in the game, he was 8-for-9 passing against the Michigan State defense that is missing one of its best cornerbacks in Josiah Scott, uh, who we talked about in our preview and prediction series on Michigan State. Josh Butler pressed into duty to replace the injured Josiah Scott. LJ Scott looking for 20, 20 to 25 carries in this game. And um, yes, the Michigan State center situation after an injury 
Matt Allen taking over at center sometime in the second quarter. And this now continues the series of Michigan State centers named Allen in their all brothers in the first two playing in the NFL, Jack Allen, Brian Allen, and now Matt Allen pressed into duty, but it is not his starting spot as of right now. Uh, there was an injury at center that forced Brian Allen into it. The Aflac trivia question tonight at the Michigan State game against Utah State was how many bullas from the Bulla family? And if you watch any Michigan State football, then you know the Bulla family has been prominent through the generations at Michigan State. So this is the sixth Bulla who has played for Michigan State. As a side note, so Michigan State struggling with Utah State. This does not in any way change my perception of Michigan State. I picked them to go five and four in the Big Ten. And that's not a weak five and four. When you hear five and four, you, you think mediocrity, but uh, Michigan State having to play uh, Ohio State, Penn State, Michigan, and then also out of the uh, Big Ten Western Division, they've got Northwestern, Purdue, and a date against Nebraska in Lincoln late in the season when I believe the Huskers will be much better. So Michigan State's 5-4 and four record in the Big Ten, if I'm right, is going to be awfully solid, 8-4 and four overall. But they've got to get by Utah State. This is not uncommon for Michigan State to wind up a season as a top 10 to 15 team, but earlier in the season, especially in the opener, to struggle. Check out the game one scores. Maybe I'll do it right here with Michigan State. And then I will check out the live chat and we'll highlight some of the other early games with Syracuse uh, all over Western Michigan and Eric Dungy having a big first half, 34-14. But uh, Michigan State down through the years has struggled against lesser opponents early in the season, even at home. And these Michigan State teams have turned out to be exceptional teams. Last year, they only beat Western Michigan 28 to 14. And then, of course, turned out to be 10 and 3 in a Holiday Bowl winning team that finished 7 and 2 in the Big Ten. The year before in 2016, Michigan State lost to BYU 31 14. All right, that was obviously the bad Michigan State team, the aberration at 3 and 9. In 2015, Michigan State struggled with Corey Davis. If you recall, Corey Davis was with Western Michigan at the time, the NFL star wide receiver, and Sparty won in 37 to 24. They also struggled with Air Force. I remember these games, watching these games, Air Force took them to a 35 21 game in that one as well. In 2014, the Michigan State team that went on to win the Cotton Bowl really didn't struggle in a game non-conference that year to a lesser opponent. Uh, the 2013 team only beat Western Michigan 26 to 13. South Florida, that was a seven to six game in the fourth quarter, and they scored two defensive touchdowns to win it 21 to six. And that was against Willie Taggart's two and ten South Florida team. Michigan State only led. Seven to six in the fourth quarter. And then Shalik Calhoun, most notably, scored a touchdown defensively, and they won 21 to six. And Michigan State went on to go 13 and one and win the Rose Bowl. Uh, 2012, they barely beat Boise State, but uh, that's a different deal. Boise State was 11 and two that year, 17 13, but they barely beat Eastern Michigan, another sluggish performance. So the Max schools in particular, but the group of five has given Michigan State trouble out of the gate, and this has been a constant theme under Mark D'Antonio in recent years. We see it time and time again. In none of these instances did Michigan State actually lose the game, but they are just trailing uh, or winning this game just by six points after trailing 14 to 13 and seven to nothing. Michigan State on top of Utah State at 20 to 14. Hope you guys are doing well tonight. This is Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football. I failed to mention that off the top. Clemson alum 98 had me so revved up to crank up the live stream. I was on the couch. I'm taking notes. I'm watching Michigan State, Utah State. I'm just about to turn over to another game. He uh, gives me a shout with about eight or nine minutes left in the second quarter and says, hey, why don't we do a live stream at halftime? And it's, I say, Clemson alum, why not? Why not do the live stream at halftime and we'll get you back to the game. And obviously you guys can turn to the game anytime you'd like. 
All right, Jonathan Howard. I have never seen this name. Jonathan, I have yet to see your name pop up on the live chat or in any of the comments. So if you've been watching Mark Rogers TV, I thank you. If not, if this is the first time, welcome to Mark Rogers TV. Yes, we thank you and we appreciate the comment that this is awesome doing live commentary. Appreciate that. Uh, keep up the great work. I'm an LSU alum. Can't wait to hear your commentary on Sunday. Nor can I. I have been looking forward to this the entire offseason. Of course, the game itself. But in terms of you guys bringing it one way or the other, Sunday night, as soon as the game goes final, double zeros, I'm going to be right here. And maybe I'll do some halftime analysis of that one as well, because that'll be a whole lot of fun, LSU and Miami. But before we get to that, of course, all day Saturday, I'll be back here at 10 a.m. Eastern time prior to the big noon kickoffs, Oklahoma, uh, Florida Atlantic, Ohio State, Oregon State. There's actually some decent, not the Buckeyes and the Beavers, but some decent noon games that could be interesting tomorrow. Uh, of course, I got BTN. Yes, I do. I've got BTN. Uh, are you surprised by the outcome of this game right now? I believe I answered that. I'm not necessarily surprised. Uh, this has been the history of Michigan State under Mark D'Antonio against the likes of Eastern, Central, and Western Michigan in particular, and some other group of fives in week one. I just went down through the history. This game, as soon as I saw the the uh, seven to nothing score when I walked in the door and had to rewind the DVR to catch the first Utah State drive, that, okay, this is what Michigan State does. I'm not going to be surprised, even if I said that they're going to cover the 23 and a half points, and they still could. It's only six right now, that Michigan State's going to slug its way to a 27 to 16 win, something like that. They've done it many times, as we just outlined. All right, Cameron Page on the line. Anybody else? There's only one team I hate more than the SEC, and that's Miami. That comes from Noah. Killa Ops, let's go Michigan State. Will I cover the Wisconsin and BYU game? So, Taylor, what I've got planned for the rest of the night is I really want to see Stanford and San Diego State. So my plan tonight was to watch Michigan State and Utah State for as long as it was competitive and then go to another game if that's more competitive. Of course, Duke and Army are playing right now, but the Blue Devils are up 17 to nothing in the third quarter. So I'll probably need not uh, check in on that one, although I've got that one on DVR right now. And of course, uh, Syracuse leads Western Michigan 34 to 14. I'd like to check out the box score on one Eric Adunji in particular. And uh, But then at 9 o'clock Eastern time, San Diego State and Stanford. I, I got to lock in on that game unless it gets out of hand. And then BYU, BYU, BYU. Are we talking about Wisconsin, BYU when they play in a few weeks? Uh, I will do my best, but I try to get to the best games. I try to cover as many games as possible at the same time at noon, 3.30, 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, and the late night games on Saturday uh, with a number of screens up at the same time. Uh, and it all depends how the games go. Uh, if, if, for example, Wisconsin and Iowa are playing, and I think that's going to be a really good game, but Wisconsin's up 24 to nothing at half, then I'll shut that one down. I'll focus elsewhere, and I'll do an analysis on the Badgers up 24 to nothing. Michigan State, Utah State about to kick off the second half. I will keep an eye on it and get off here in just a minute. Of course, you guys are free to do whatever you'd like. I would like to check on Syracuse. And um, Western Michigan numbers also would like to see what uh, Duke is doing with Daniel Jones, at quarterback against Army. Obviously, the Blue Devils playing a good defensive effort at 17 to nothing. And if you recall early last season, Duke took it to Northwestern, what turned out to be a good Wildcats team, 41 to 17 at home in week two or three in that one. So Blue Devils up 17 to nothing. Army's got the ball. Third quarter, 10 and a half left in the period. Of course, Army had to replace its quarterback. They don't throw it much to begin with, but actually getting decent passing numbers out of Keith Hopkins at four for seven for 77 yards. On the Duke side, Daniel Jones, eight for 12, 128 yards. Uh, 
Uh, he's run it eight times for 29. We talked about Bretain Brown last week when we did our Duke preview and prediction, coming off a nice freshman campaign with over 700 yards rushing, off to a great start at almost nine yards per carry, seven carries for 60 yards and a touchdown. And uh, Duke receiving TJ Roming seems like he's been in uh, Durham forever catching the football for Duke. He's four for 31 right now. Aaron Young with a big 61 yard catch for Duke has caught three total for 89 yards. Duke leads 17 to nothing. The defense obviously looking great and putting a uh, hurting on this army rushing it attack, although the Knights do have uh, 116 yards rushing on 33 carries, but that's only 3.5 per attempt. Duke leads 17-0 in the third, nine minutes left in the quarter. Oh boy, Syracuse was up 31 to nothing. now checking in with five and change left in the third quarter. Syracuse 34, Western Michigan 28. 34-28. So Eric Dungy, I assumed with that score with 31 points right out of the gate that he was having a big, big first half. He is not four for 15 for 103 yards and one touchdown. So he hit uh, a big pass play or two, but he's only four of 15. Tommy DeVito, the prized four-star freshman, apparently pressed into action. I don't know if that's because of ineffectiveness by Dungy or that's injury. We're going to have to find that out. Maybe somebody out there has been watching Syracuse and Western Michigan, but Tommy DeVito is four of nine for 42 yards, and Carl Jones also getting into the action on three for three for negative 26 yards. I got to see that play. Three for three for negative 26 yards unless there is a big issue with uh, ESPN's box score here. Western Michigan led by quarterback John Wasink is 10 for 22 for 203 yards, two touchdowns and one pick. And again, Western Michigan was down 31 to seven. They have outscored Syracuse 21 to three to get within 34, 28 Syracuse with the ball up six, five minutes and change left in the third quarter. Syracuse rushing Eric Dungy 49 yard run to highlight 10 carries for 150 yards tonight. Mo Neal has 10 carries for 39. Levante Bellamy, a big night for Western Michigan against the Orange defense, 10 carries for a buck 20. Syracuse, if they are to be bowl eligible, you would think that they have to win this game. Again, we outlined it when we talked to Syracuse and gave our prediction on the Orange this season at four and eight, two and six in the... ACC conference, I saw them possibly getting tripped up by one of these group of five teams in addition to losing to Notre Dame. And right now, after a 31-7 lead, they only lead at Western Michigan, Syracuse out of the power five out of the ACC, making the trip to Mac country to take on Western Michigan. And they're only up six. So those are the games right now, Michigan State and Utah State. And uh, Sparty still leads 20 to 14 after Brian Lewerke threw a touchdown pass right at the end of the first half to take a 20 to 14 lead. Uh, Michigan State's got the ball at midfield. LJ Scott carrying it down near the first town line just inside. I assumed that, that was LJ Scott. I can't see from there. That uh, actually was not LJ Scott, but a Michigan State ball carrier because I don't have my contacts in or my glasses. Pardon me. I can read the screens closer to me a little bit better than I can uh, the uh, TV from across the room. But Michigan State driving the ball down to the Utah State 42 yard line up 20 to 14. And they've got about a second and four. So we are going to give it up from here. Clemson alum 98 appreciate the suggestion of jumping on here at halftime. Michigan State in trouble up 20 to 14. Syracuse in real trouble after leading by 24, only up six at Western Michigan. Duke laying the defense on Army at 17 to nothing. Big days right now out of Eric Dungy rushing for 150 yards into the third quarter. And um, there you have it. So we'll be back after Stanford, San Diego State. 
We'll see what else we have. Maybe a big upset at East Lansing, maybe an upset of Syracuse going to Western Michigan, although from a point spread standpoint, not a huge upset according to Vegas there. Appreciate you guys jumping on the line. I'm going to check the chat one more time to see if you guys have any comments or questions for me in particular before we let it go. George, I think LSU might win the SEC West. They might be the Cinderella team, but I still took Miami, and tomorrow I'm going to find out. Kid, kid, Miami might win, but I believe in LSU's defense. Jonathan LeBron, Michigan should take care of Notre Dame. George, I bet money on Alabama, Miami, Michigan, and Auburn straight up. They better win. All right, George, let's see. Alabama straight up, of course. Miami straight up. Yes, Michigan and Auburn. George, I have yet to release my Saturday picks. Uh, if you guys caught my Thursday and Friday picks, I took a Northwestern plus two and to win straight up. I also took Central Florida to cover 24 and a half against UConn. So I'm 2-0 and going into tonight, 2-0 and against the spread as well. I do have Michigan State covering 23 and a half. They're only up six at this point. I've got Wisconsin winning, of course, but Western Kentucky covering 36 and a half. Later tonight, Stanford covers 14 against San Diego State are my picks. Baylor hosts Duke week three. Could be a long day for the Bears. Bryce Love, yeah, later tonight we get to see Bryce Love hopefully completely healthy for the entire season. What he was able to do on one ankle against USC and TCU was pretty remarkable. All right, I appreciate you guys joining the live stream. We'll get you back to Utah State and Michigan State. And we will also, of course, you can check out Syracuse and Western Michigan on CBS Sportsnet with Western Michigan possible pulling, possibly pulling off a slight upset. Or I could just sit here. You could watch the game. I can watch the game and we can check out Michigan State and Utah State if you guys are, are in the middle of a conversation here. Gators go four and eight, according to Kid Kid. Kid, kid, will Florida make it to a bowl? According to me, yes, it's seven and five, four and four in the SEC. Gators go bowling. Or according to George in the playoffs. So appreciate you guys. If you guys are up late, depending on your time zone, I will be here at roughly 1230. Uh, should be about the time that does Stanford and San Diego State wrap it up. If the game's like 45 to 10 in the fourth quarter, we'll start early. But if it goes down to the wire or it's up in the air down to the final series or two, I'm going to wait until the final zeros tick off the clock. Thanks for joining Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football. If anyone out there is yet to subscribe to our newsletter, please do so by sending your email to Mark Rogers TV at Gmail. Mark Rogers TV at Gmail. I will send you a newsletter each and every Monday outlining college football with a taken perspective that you're not going to find anywhere else. Also, subscribe to the channel. Uh, you guys are building us day by day by day. Thank you so much for your help and support, as well as like and comment. We will see you after Stanford, San Diego State, as the Cardinals try to enact some revenge against the Aztecs. See you next time.